Welcome to December's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is pseudo-palindromic paths in a binary tree. Given a binary tree where node values are digits from 1 to 9, a path in the binary tree is said to be pseudo-palindromic if at least one permutation of the node values in the path is a palindrome. So in other words, uh, the path taken to the leaf, uh, all these numbers, if we could rearrange them somehow to form a palindrome, we call that pseudo-palindromic. So for example, we have a couple paths here in this tree, 233, 231, 211. Two of them are going to be pseudopalindromic, right? Because we could rearrange these to go like 323, three, that's a palindrome, as well as 121, that's a palindrome. However, 231, there's no way we could rearrange that into a palindrome, so that doesn't count. And a couple more examples here. So we know how to tra traverse a binary tree. Uh, we do a pre-order traversal and just take along the path, attaching all the node values along the path. And once we reach a leaf, we could then check to see if it's a palindrome. So the trick here is what would be the function to determine whether the path is a palindrome or not. And they kind of give it to you right here in the hints. Um, note that the node values of a path form a palindrome if at most one digit has an odd frequency. So for example, if we had uh, one, two, one, or uh, I should say like 112, this is going to be a palindrome because we could rearrange that to uh, 121, right? Uh, same with like 1122, we could rearrange that to 1221. Uh, it's only when we have multiple odd digits, say like 1233 uh, three or something like that, we can't really rearrange that to form a palindrome. So what we can do is write a function to count the number of counts for each number and then check to see if at most only one of them is odd. And if, if that's the case, then we can say, yes, this is uh, pseudo palindromic. So let's start with that. We'll say, uh, we'll write a function here, we'll do it inside of the function, and we'll say is pal, or I should say pseudo palindrome. Um, but you get the idea. So we'll pass in a list of numbers. And what we'll do is create a counter object of this list. And now, um, what I'll do here is say, all right, for the key value in c.items, uh, if the value is odd, meaning, meaning uh, this modular 2 does not equal 0, that means it's odd, right? Then we could say we found at least one. So we'll have to have some sort of um, variable here to say, let's say like 1 equals false to keep track of whether we've seen one before or not. So if it is odd, we'll say, all right, if uh, one is true, then we can return false because it's not a palindrome. Otherwise, if this is the first time we've seen it, then we'll set one to equal true. Uh, otherwise, if we can get out of this loop, then we can just return true because it is a palindrome. And I suppose if we pass in an empty list, we can just count that as a palindrome here. All right, so now we have our function. Um, maybe we'll give it a little test. Let's say print is pal and let's pass in two lists we'll say one uh one two two and we'll do one no. with one two three how about one something like that so this should be true and false Oop, i think i misspelled that Let's see, oh, come on. Oh, A for syntax. Okay, so this should be true false and it is. All right, great. So now all we need to do is write our function for our pre-order defer search. And what we'll do is pass in the node. All right, so what do we do here? Well. Uh, just like any other defer search, we first have to say, okay, if mm, not node, then we return. And we'll return a zero. Now, if, I should say else if, we find a position where we say node.left, not node.left, and not node.right, that means we're at a leaf. So we can check now to see um, whether this is a palindrome or not. And we have to pass in the path that we've taken. And this is going to be a list of all the node values we've seen. And we'll just calculate that. We'll say, mm, all right, so if is 
pal of our path plus the node value, then we'll return a one. Otherwise, return also zero because we've reached the end of the path, but it's now a boundary. Now, finally, what do we do here? Hmm, I suppose really all we need to do is say, okay, return DFS no dot left and the path plus uh, no dot value. And same thing here, say DFS no dot right path plus node dot value and make that list. All right, so let's see if this works. We pass in a root and an empty list. And let's see if this returns what it's supposed to. So it does return two. It looks like that's working. So let's submit that. And there we go, accepted. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, they give it to you really in the hints there. Um, really, the tricky part here is to write the function to determine whether it's pseudo palindromic. But otherwise, we've seen this before, right? Finding the paths to the very end of uh, the leaf. There's many ways you can do this. You can do this iteratively, uh, but this seems to work. So we'll end it there. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.